course, the question is, is it truly effective? But more importantly, is it safe? Libby joins us now along with psychologist Dr. Adele LaFrance, who conducted a recent study on ayahuasca and eating disorders that appears in the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs. And Libby, a lot of people are hearing about this for the very first time. Uh, you highlighted some of what you went through. How did you feel following the ceremonies? I think a really good representation of the whole experience was I, I flew down um, on boatloads of uh, tranquilizers because I don't like flying and on the on the way back I didn't take any and I felt completely calm and I'm um, just in a completely different state. Tell us about its effect on your eating disorder. I can't say everything just disappeared overnight. Um, there were things for me, like the compulsive exercise, any sort of like of the compulsive factors in it, calorie restriction, all that stuff, it, it did go away for me um, and hasn't come back. Other things like body dysmorphia and stuff, like I didn't even have my, my cycle, I was exercising too much and, and that was it, you know, I'm a mom, of a daughter, I'm pregnant now. It was a huge transformation for me to go from a place where that was completely unheard of. Well, I think Dr. Yes. LaFrance, tell us about your study on this. Tell us what you've been finding. When you're desperate, you can end up making some desperate choices and you can ignore red flags and you can ignore cautions. And so a big part of the study actually was highlighting some of the issues that really need to be taken into consideration. And so I found myself at a retreat, the very same retreat that Libby attended. In fact, that's how we met. And at least one third of the people who were attending this retreat also had a history of disordered eating or full-blown eating disorders. And there were shifts that were happening that I felt I couldn't ignore. Now. In the context of research, it's not a clinical trial, not even close. We would call it a conversation starter because it's based on interviews with people who have already done it. We're a long ways from being able to identify who it's good for under what conditions. For the first time, people are starting to study not just medications that are formally approved through the process, but psychedelics, mm -hmm. other treatments that are considered illegal out on the street. I want to bring into the conversation board certified psychiatrist Dominic Sportelli, who's joined us via Skype because Dr. Sportelli, really interesting and important conversation because look, eating disorders notoriously difficult to treat and we're hearing some, some pretty remarkable stories, particularly Libby's here. What's your take on this? As a psychiatrist, seeing a medication or a substance that doesn't just treat symptoms, but changes the way we think is absolutely fascinating. Ayahuasca is a combination of dimethyltryptamine, which is a very, very potent hallucinogen, combined with something called a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. When you take those two things together and ingest them, people tend to have this profound spiritual hallucinogenic mystical experience that's defined in the research as what's called a noetic experience, meaning you come away from this experience knowing something or knowing more than you previously did, which is absolutely fascinating. Now let's think of something. People with eating disorders are already in a lot of cases medically compromised, meaning they can have issues with magnesium, chloride, potassium. They can have heart issues, cardiac issues. And we know that ayahuasca specifically DMT, can increase heart rate, increase blood pressure. It can augment some of these physiologic symptoms, not to mention the continued vomiting. And I believe it also diarrhea. interacts with so, the antidepressants and opioids, which many of these same people who are going for disorders might be on, correct? So important. People that are treated for eating disorders, for the most part, are treated with an SSRI or an antidepressant. We specifically don't really use monoamine oxidase inhibitors anymore because of the dangerousness. And part of the ayahuasca brew is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. If you combine that with an antidepressant, you have a very high likelihood of experiencing something potentially deadly called serotonin syndrome. Not only that, we've also seen things like seizures, respiratory depression, and some pretty significant medical issues. So there are some significant concerns here. I think everyone is in agreement here in terms of potential risks, potential benefits. 
Libby, certainly for you, for you, we are so happy that you're doing well. Best of luck as a mother and all that your future holds. Dr. Franz, appreciate it. Dominique, we'll see you soon, friend. See you, Doc.